how machine learning is evolving and centralization is kind of like hodling all the data, we're not going to get to equitable outcomes like this. So. AI DAOs, communities that build intelligence. Autonomous computation running on decentralized infrastructure is here. How does AI come to bear on emerging intelligent systems? Dimitri De Jonge, Ocean Protocol. Good evening, everyone. Um, I managed to squash two buzzwords next to each other, AI and DAOs. I was actually thinking adding a third one, AI, DAOs, and medical cannabis, but I didn't. Um, I'm gonna, so a quick intro of myself. I've been working in the blockchain industry maybe for seven, eight years now. Uh, founded a few companies in it. Uh, one of, the first one is called Ascribe, second one Big Chain DB, and the last one Ocean Protocol. And more recently, we, we found that, well, to get adoption going, we have to like go one step back, right? We're, we're always looking five to 10 years ahead in the future, creating like very interesting nonlinear technology. But we also have to figure out what's the adoption cycle here. So we created a new entity called Kiko. And what we're looking at really is ecosystems. But today, I'm going to talk about a bit of the mission that uh, I think and I strongly feel that how machine learning is evolving and centralization is kind of like hodling all the data. We're not going to get to equitable outcomes like this. So some of this technology just has to be open and public. It can't be in the hands of a few. Because these things get cringy, right? When they're really good, they get really cringy. So, but there's, there's solutions to that. And you can look at communities like OpenAI, uh, maybe Kaggle. There is WaveNet, ImageNet. There is a lot of like, open communities around machine learning and AI. And I think DAOs really can apply to that. So when I say AI DAOs, I think there's like two variants of it. One of them is DAOs to create better and open, equitable AIs. The other one is more radical. And that's saying that, well, we're going to create autonomous self-owned agents. And they're going to basically form a network of an organization. And they're going to have a governance structure. And they're loosely going to release the human out of their system. Of course, we'd have to do some hands holding there. But I think we can yield very efficient systems there. And companies like Ocean Protocol, companies like Singularity Net, Fetch AI, they're all working towards a similar goal, like a network of smart agents, very modular, creating value, interacting with each other, composing into solutions. Now, what I'm trying to get at is that if you want to create such an organization that's decentralized, maybe autonomous, maybe we should focus on ourselves first. So, if I look at myself, there is like something in my head, which basically is consisting of two parts. One of them is like this instant gratification monkey, and the other one is more like a rational decision maker, the governor. And they have different goals, right? My instant gratification monkey wants to play games, wants to have that very quick feedback. On the other hand, uh, there's a problem solver, a decision maker, somebody that steers, and we have to balance those two forces that are in our heads. We have a pr lizard brain and we have a secondary brain, right? So bringing that to organizations, I think here we I kind of sketched out like how this could go. Like we start with everything is open and public and commons. Privatization kicked in around the 1700s, where all the land got like. Um, basically assigned to people and, and, and individuals, which yields organizations. They're hierarchical. They tend to be slow. They sometimes have eight layers. And now we're into something more efficient that we could call decentralized autonomous organizations. It can go one step further, and that's something that I'm really excited about, is when we create autonomous agents. These agents are not just like decision makers. They also hold value. They have a wallet. You basically think about you're paying something to a non-human, that's possible now. You exchange value with entities. You not, you maybe not even care if they're human or not. 
Now, if they start collaborating and stuff like that, then we do need to have solid governance to make sure that it ends well. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of uh, really interesting applications. Um, the first one is more or less your crowdsourcing, right? Saying that, hey, we have a mission, we believe this should be built, we put in funds, people can apply, and then the smart contracts basically, they, they release funds upon milestones and other types of things. But then you can also look into self-sovereign nature. Uh, we have a project called Nature 2.0, and it's all about like, how can we make sure that, well, natural resources can protect themselves from human interaction. Maybe they can be self-sovereign, maybe they can hold value themselves without having like a human owner on top of it. But where I see the most and immediate value at is in art. Uh, I'm working on a few projects here. Um, maybe you should check out Abraham.ai, and it's more like a decentralized arts collective, which creates arts that doesn't really belong to a single in individual, but it's a, basically a consortium of art generators. And it can hold value, and it can disperse value back, back into the community. I think it's, it's interesting because it has a narrative with it, right? It doesn't really have like an efficient business case, it has a really strong narrative for people to believe in this. And it's a playground, it's a sandbox. Well, what I was doing at Ocean was more like looking at like how can we do data as an organization? How can we make sure that if we solve one problem by using machine learning techniques, maybe for lung cancer detection or lung volume detection, and we create a very interesting data set out of that and a set of gradients that, that are trained from the AI, can we maybe use that in other contexts? Can that community signal like, hey, we solve these types of problems in the healthcare space, but maybe those algorithms might also apply to other things like autonomous driving and other things. There's a very interesting technique called transfer learning that allows you to cut up neural networks, the input-output layer, and then train it on something apply it to the next things. So it's very interesting to see like, how this community around a data set about a machine learning activity can signal themselves into different domains. What I think that we're heading towards uh, is, well, we have a thin client, a wallet, you hold your keys, you're self-sovereign. If you're a validator in the system or a miner, you become a fat client, you, you basically make sure that the shared state in the network is consistent. And it allows you to do a lot of things like decentralized governance, DeFi, value generation, validation, resilience of that network. But you can add another layer where you make your node smart. Basically, if you have a full node, why don't you make it your full assistant, your DeFi assistant? And, and here's where we, we're using techniques like federated learning and multi-party computation to make sure that this network of nodes becomes a bit smarter and takes decisions according to yield, strategy, privacy. There could be markets attached to that. Here's a, one example that I think is, 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 is a simple model, but it allows us to create federated intelligence systems. So think about, you have a DAO in the middle, and that DAO is the owner of federated model. This is not more than a topology and some uh, trained gradients. But it also has an incentive system for clients to contribute data or do like remote computation on that data and send back the gradients. Using tokens in that DAO, you can basically create a magnet for data providers to feed the model. On the other hand, and this is where it really becomes interesting, is when you contribute to that model, you're actually also a stakeholder in the model, right? Because you got the tokens earned, and those tokens can be used to use the model, but also govern the model. So your Twitter feeds are not pumped with ads, but the community decides what would be the ranking algorithm. So I think there's like a lot of things to explore, but we have to like keep in touch that one part is our monkey brain that thinks about how can we implement incentives for people to collaborate into this DAO community whatever vertical you have. The other one is more thinking about the long-term strategy, the governance of things. So that's what we do at Kiko. Um, we call it ecosystem adoption. Uh, and yeah, happy to have a chat afterwards. <laughs>